We all love to use cool third-party plugins, but I'm sure many of us haven't discovered the full potential of the built-in ones. Today we'll take a look at the built-in Final Cut Pro transitions, and I'll show you 5 things that I really like, and that maybe some of you didn't know could be done. Hi, I'm Rafi Saar from Syncopa Productions. Here are 5 things about the built-in Final Cut Pro transitions that I find cool and that I hope you will like as well. Number 1. Use a slide transition instead of keyframing incoming and outgoing elements. So I'm here in Final Cut Pro and let's say I want to have a succession of images coming in. Now what I could do is add keyframes to have them move in one by one. But instead I'm going to use a slide transition. So let me select all those images. The slide transition is here part of the movements. I just double click and it added all those slide transitions here between my images. Now I want to make them shorter. So let me go to the index, go to the clips and enter here a slide and now I can quickly select all of those, Control D to change the duration, and let's set it to 8 frames. Okay, now let's take a look. That's nice, right? You even get this nice motion blur. Take a look. See? So in just a few seconds, I got myself a nice slideshow. Now with all those transitions still selected, I can go here to the inspector and instead of slide in, change it to slide push. And now instead of going on top of the other pictures, it will actually push the other pictures over to the side, you see? Take a look here. Okay, so they go one by one, like this. Now take a look, if I stand on the transition itself, instead of selecting the type, I can also change the direction. So I have left, up, right, down, or custom. Well, what's custom? Well, take a look, we have here an arrow and I can actually move it in any direction that I want. So if I do something here diagonal, now the slight push will go to the side in this direction. Isn't that cool? And I didn't use a single keyframe. And as you can see, I've applied the slight transition to the secondary timeline, so that's no problem. And in fact, I can even apply it to any image or graphic. In this case here, I have my logo or even text. So in this case, let's say I want my logo to show up from the top and those two lines show up from the left and those two lines to show up from the right. Well, that's easily done. I just select all of them, double click on the slide and half of my work is already done. Let's see. Okay, all I have to do now is change this one to go down and these two to slide left. Let me also make them a little bit shorter. So I select those slide transitions. Again, Control D. Let's make them 10 frames. And the ones here, I want to change to a slide out. Also, those two, I want to slide out to the left. And this one, I want to go back up. Let me quickly render this so it will run smoothly. And let's take a look. Great, that looks really nice. Okay, so I didn't use any keyframes here. If you want to make it longer, you just make it longer or shorter any way you want. It's much easier than using keyframes. And obviously you don't have to use a slide. You can use anything you want. I also very often use the directional, as you can see at the end of my videos, like this. All right. Number two, use the floor transition to seamlessly connect different cuts which look similar. The floor transition is one of the dissolves. It shows up right here. It uses a similar algorithm than the rate conform here if you select optical flow. What it does is build some pixels between two images so that the transition between them will be seamless. So in many cases like here, when I have a cut, okay, let's take a look. When you have some action going on and you can do it straight from the shot. Okay, so I have this cut and you can do it and I want to eliminate it. Okay, I could use a simple cross dissolve. Some action going on and you can do it. But then you see me twice here and that's not so nice either. Okay, so instead I'm going to use the flow transition and now let's take a look going on and you can do it straight Woo! you don't see the cut take a look again going on and you can do it straight it looks as if i'm just moving a little bit backwards and that's it but you don't see any cut 
you don't see any transition. That's really a lifesaver. Or instead of having to artificially zoom in and zoom out or change angle in order to not show the cut, very often if there isn't too much movement in the scene, like in this case, if one shot had my hand up and the other wouldn't, my hand would still have to appear from somewhere and then the flow transition wouldn't work. But in such cases where the images are similar, the flow transition is really great. Going on. And you can do it straight from the shutter. I don't always know if the flow transition will work, so what I do is I select it, press Ctrl R to render just that selection, and then I can check to see if it looks good. Number three, look for special on-screen elements which allow you to change the transition. So we already saw in the slide transition that we have this arrow here that allows us to change the direction of the transition. Well, many, many built-in transitions have something similar. Let's take a look. If I go here to the wipes and select, let's say, a circle. Okay, let's put it here. And again, you can see that I have some, let's select the transition, you can see that I have here some control. Well, first of all, you can change where the center point is going to be, and you can move this here in order to add a soft edge or make it sharper. Likewise, if I use a center instead, and I select the transition, here I get the arrow. Okay, so I can change the direction of the opening. I can also change the soft edge here or make it sharper. And I can also change the center point. It's also good to look at the inspector because you can see more options. Like here, you can decide it to close instead of to open. So there you have it. Let's look at another example, the clock. Okay, by default, it's going like this. So there you have it. But again, I can change the soft edge. I can change the center point. And in the inspector, I can make it move counterclockwise. And I can also change the angle of where it's starting, which I can also do right here. Okay, let's take a look. So there you have it. If I go here to the zoom, again, I can change the direction and make it blur in another direction. And you can also play with it and apply it to text, like I've done here, where I've used a swing transition, set the anchor at the top and direction away, and then I can make a kind of a counter. Let me show you one more thing. Let me go back to the blurs and choose here the radial blur. And let's make it longer so we'll see it clearly. Right now, if I use it as is, it will blur from the center. But what I'm blurring is my logo, which is on top. So it's not really making the movement that I want, but that can easily be fixed. Just take the center point here, move it up to the middle of the logo and problem solved. Number four. Use all your crossfades. This one is not the transition you will find here, but in the menus. And it's actually something that was added to Final Cut Pro in the summer of 2020. So it's pretty recent. And that's an audio crossfade. Very often when you have cuts between clips, you will hear some pops in the audio right at the cut. You can of course move those audio handles, but it's better if you first overlap the audios. Well, that's very easily done now. You just select the clips, go to modify menu, adjust audio fades and crossfade or select option T and it's done. Now, how do you know that it's done? Let's just expand the audio and see what happened. All those audios were overlapped and there's a very nice audio crossfade between each clip. And then up. But what's still missing is that the burst. Okay. Now, if you want to change the length of those, you just go to the preferences under editing here under crossfade. So if I make it longer and let's undo and let's redo now. And as you can see, the crossfade is now one second longer. Seven and up, but what's still missing? By the way, if you just have audio clips, you can just add a simple cross dissolve, which will actually add the crossfade for the audio, and then you can easily change the crossfade duration. So here I have an audio clip, which I wanted to make longer, so I attached some of the beginning before the end of it, so that I could make this audio longer. Okay, so with the cross dissolve between two audio clips, I can also very easily add a crossfade. Number five, take advantage of the default transition. Well, I hope that all of you know that if I hit Command T on the keyboard, I get my default transition, which by default is a cross dissolve. And if I go to the edit menu, you can see here, add cross dissolve, Command T. But you can change that. So let's say you liked my first tip about using a slide transition, you can make the slide transition the default. Just go to the transition, right click on it, and select make default. Now it's gone. Where is it gone? Well, all the way to the top. 
So let me remove this here. And now if I click on Command T, I just added a slide transition. And if I go to the Edit menu, now it says Add Slide. So that's very handy if there's a certain transition that you like to use a lot. And if you want the floor transition to be the default, then you can do just that. If you want to restore it back to the way it was, just go to the Cross Dissolve and make it the default. And we're back to how it was before. I hope you learned something new here. We sometimes don't realize that what we need is already right there in front of us. Write below in the comments what's your favorite built-in transition. Please click below to subscribe and click on the bell to be notified when I post more videos like this one. See you in my next video.